Abbott. The Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing stars Amy Arnell and Bob Matthews, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who, when caught filling his Uncle Artie Stebbins pockets full of dog biscuits, because he heard him say he was going to the dog, calmly said... Costello, come here. What are you so excited about? What's the matter with you? I don't know, Abbott. I'm all mixed up. What do you mean? In my room, I got a big picture of Lauren Bacall on the ceiling. Uh, yes. On my dresser, I, I, I got a picture of Rita Hayworth. And on the walls, I got two pictures of Betty Grable and Yvonne DiCarlo under my pillow. And then I got a picture of Dorothy Lamore in her sarong, and I think I'm going nuts. Why? All night long, I keep dreaming of Jean Autry's horse. Oh. <laughs> Costello... What are you doing with all those pictures in your room? Well, it's time for me to put on my annual spring play, and I'm looking for my leading lady. I think I'll pick Hedy Lamar this year to play the big love scene with me. Hedy Lamar is a great actress, naturally, but uh, she'd make a fool of you in two minutes. Yeah, but just think of those two minutes. Oh. <laughs> Will you please talk, Sam? Hey, what play, what play are you doing this year? Well, I'm a... Due to the meat shortage, I thought I would do that famous old play about meat. About meat? Yeah. You dummy, there's no play about meat. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. What about A.B.'s Irish roast? Oh, come on. <laughs> and Shakespeare's play about meat, The Merchant of Venison. Oh, will you please cut it out? Cut it out? And then there was Hamlet, with the famous lines, Two beef or not two beef. <laughs> What was the name of that? Lost Beef Ends. <laughs> Can I go back to that one? Yes, I know you did. Look, will you cut it out, please? Uh, what's your play all about? All it starts with me kissing the leading lady for 20 minutes. Uh, you kissed the leading lady for 20 minutes? Yep. Uh, then what happened? The curtain goes up and the play starts. Oh, I see. You tell me that's no way to write a play. In order to write a play, you've got to collect your data. What was that? Yeah, you've got to collect your data. Where's your data? He's home with my mama. <laughs> No, no, I mean the data for your grammar. Where's your grammar? She's home with my grandpa. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Look, Costello, w- 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 by the way, what about me? Uh, uh, do I have a part in the play? Oh, yeah, but you've got a beautiful part. Swell. As the play opens, yes. they find you drowning in a bathtub, but the water is pouring in over your head. Yeah, wait, 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 and then... Yeah, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Do I have any lines? Oh, yeah, you got two lines. Yeah, what are they? Glove, glove. <laughs> What do you mean, that's all? You see, Abbott, this play is a mystery. Well, what am I doing in the bathtub? That's the mystery. (laughs) Suddenly, a shot is heard. Wait a minute. Do I get hit? Yeah. Where? Right between the towel rack and the soap dish. (laughs) That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Well, if you don't like that, I've got a historical play. It's the story of the first Indian Gypsy Rose Lee. The first Indian Gypsy Rose Lee? Yes, Drip Poker Hunter. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, Costello, you can't... Can't bring a play in here at the last minute and put it on the air tonight. Why, the NBC censor has to see and hear it first. The censor? Certainly. What has the censor got to do with my play? Well, your your play might contain some naughty words. Here, here, rabbit. Well, now, wait a minute. I'm like that. After all, I am uh, a scout. Uh, I'm, I'm a scout of the first I quarter. understand that part is all right. You, you won't find any naughty words in my play. I understand. <laughs> all right. All right. I got it. <laughs> Let's, we'll, see about, we'll see about that. You go ahead and read your play, and I'll pretend that I'm the censor. Now, if I hear one naughty word, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll ring this little bell. You see this little bell I have in my hand? If you hear a naughty word. I'll ring it like that. Okay. Now, can you hear that all right? Sure. All right, now go ahead. <laughs> okay. Now, as my play opens, a boy and a girl are riding along the country road. Far from the city's hustle and bustle. Ah, uh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you can't say bustle. But I have to say bustle. This takes place in the back country. Uh, right near the county seat. <laughs> I'm sorry, Costello, but your bustle is out. My bustle is out? Yes. That's just the way I'm built. <laughs> <laughs> now, please go on with your 
with your story. Okay. All right. Well, if the boy and girl are riding along, he suddenly stops the car. Ah, 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 wait a minute. Uh, they've got to keep on riding. But the car is out of gas. I'm sorry, you'll have to change it. The car ran into a tree. You'll have to change it. There's a too much old baby sitting in the middle of the road crying. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yes. Then you change it. Well, well, well. <laughs> question that was put to 113,000 doctors from border to border and coast to coast. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Three of America's leading independent research organizations did the asking, and the brand named most was Camel. Well, doctors like all of us smoke for pleasure. Camel's rich, full flavor appeals to their taste, and Camel's cool mildness registers with their throats, just as with millions of smokers the world over. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. And now, Camel's own Bob Matthews sings Nick Kenny's newest hit, Blue. Blue, I was lonely and blue. I was aimlessly drifting along with a tide like a ship lost at sea. Ooh, at a table full of food and the sweet serenade that the orchestra played was a blue.
Costello, Costello, yeah, yeah, yeah. what are you doing on that phone? I call Lana Turner to see if she will be my little lady in the play tonight. Oh, why don't you stop, Costello? You don't even know Lana Turner. Well, yes, I do, Abbott. One time I kissed her, and what a kiss that was. When it was all over, she didn't have to ask me what's cooking. She knew. <laughs> operator, operator, what are you answer? I was waiting for you to pick up those eggs. Look. <laughs> Look, kid, I want to crash for you. One, two, one. What exchange? Crash for you! Crash for you! I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Crash for you! I'll spell it. C as in chair. In what? Chair, chair. What are you sitting on? A hot water bottle. <laughs> I'm chilly. Look, operator, will you give me a lot of turn? Oh, sure. You get me Clark Gable. <laughs> Look, operator, I have no time to play games. Then you'll never be popular. Oh. Look, operator, do you brush your teeth with gunpowder? No, I don't. Then quit shooting off your mouth. <laughs> now, give me a lot of turn Go ahead. Here's your party. Hello, darling. I adore you. I love you madly. I'm going to come over to your house right away and hold your lily white hand. Boss, you sure is going to be disappointed. <laughs> Will you please put Miss Turner on the phone? Sorry, boy, she's picking flowers in the garden. <laughs> How do you like that? Imagine Lana Turner in the garden. Well, I think that's wonderful. I think all women should spend all their time in the garden. A woman that stays in the garden keeps out of mischief. Didn't help Eve. Uh, <laughs> look. <laughs> well, you still haven't got a lady lady for your play tonight. Now, what are you going to do? Wait a minute. Come in. Well, it's our old friend, Scotty Brown. Hello, ladies. I just dropped in to ask you if you could let me have the loan of one of your older razor blades. Ah, uh, sorry, Scotty. And what are you going to do? Shave? No, laddie. We're having split pea soup for supper, and I haven't got anything sharp enough to split the pea. <laughs> Here you are, Scotty. Uh, thank you, laddie. Well, I've got to get back into town. I'll go out and lie down on the street. You're going to lie down in the street? Aye, laddie. Some motorist will think I've been run over and rush me into town. It works every time. <laughs> Come on, Pastel. Let's go across the hall and talk to Mrs. Niles. Now, she might suggest a leading lady for your play. But uh, be careful now what you say and how you say it. You understand? Halls are kind of dirty, aren't they? Go ahead. Oh, hello, Miss Rabbit. I see you're taking your bulldog out for a walk. Oh, pardon me. That's Costello. <laughs> I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Niles. I was just about to pay you a compliment. Oh, you were? Yes, I was just going to say how much better you look in sunglasses. Uh, but I'm not wearing sunglasses. Uh, no, but I am, and you look much better. <laughs> quiet. Quiet, Costello. And uh, Mrs. Niles, Costello is looking for a young and beautiful girl to be his leading lady. I accept. You accept? He said a young and beautiful girl. Well, I have the face of an 18-year-old girl. Well, you better give it back to her. You're getting it all wrinkled. <laughs> Costello, what you think of my work on the stage? Costello, my wife is a great actress. To me, she's another Hepburn. To me, she's another Hotburn. <laughs> Costello, quit acting so smart oh, now. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Rabbit. I think Costello is a very clever little man. In fact, Costello, I have a little problem I'd like to have you help me with. Uh, tell me, how many hairs does a pig have? I don't know. Well, the next time you shave, count them. <laughs> Certainly told Costello off that time, dear. I think you're wonderful. You're my little potato bun. Oh, no, Kenneth, dear. You're my little potato bun. Oh, no, I insist. You're my little potato bun. And I insist you're my little potato bun. Well, if anybody's out there with a flitch gun, what are you waiting for? Again. Well, you've done it again, Costello. Why do you always have to be so mean? I don't know. Ah, uh, you don't. Know. I'm just the tramp hitchhiking down the highway of life. I'm just a fauna looking for Flora. Please don't tell Dick Tracy on me. If you do, he won't let me work for him anymore. You work for this Dick Tracy? Yeah, I pose for those pictures of B.O. Plenty. Uh... <laughs> Come on, Costello. You still haven't found your leading lady. Oh, pal, don't, monsieur. Will you hold the door open for me? Hey, look, Costello. It's Mrs. Niles' French maid, Fifi LeBlanc. Hello, Fifi. Oh, monsieur Costello, you cute little man, you. Mon petit ami, mon cher, cher ami. Vous êtes le plus bel 
Madame Dumont. Ah, mercy buck ups and praise be. <laughs> hey, Phoebe, here we are. I want to look at you. Good, good. You're just a girl for my leading lady. Monsieur Costello, you mean I look like an actor? Oh, you have such beautiful eyes. With you as my leading lady, we will climb to such heights. It will make us dizzy. Oh, yes, but you have a head start. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Costello, Phoebe couldn't be your leading lady. She doesn't speak English. Sure, then we'll do the play in French. Oh, you speak the French, monsieur? Ah, sure does. Ah, sure does. <laughs> Figures compiled by three top-ranking independent research organizations state that... According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. This survey put the question, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? To 113,000 doctors, doctors in every state of the 48. The brand most named was Camel. Now, why don't you have your own personal cigarette survey? Ask your T-Zone, that's T for taste and T for throat, about camels. Your taste will tell you how it likes the rich, full flavor of camels' great blend of costlier tobaccos. Your throat will tell you most conclusively how camels' cool mildness agrees with it. Your T-Zone may well explain why camel was the brand named most by doctors. With Carl Hoff of the Camel Orchestra, lovely Amy Arnell sings, Give Me the Simple Life. I don't believe in fretting and grieving Why mess around with strife I never was cut out to step and strut out Give me the simple life Some find it pleasant dining on pheasants Those things roll off my night Just serve me tomatoes and mashed potatoes Give me the simple life A cottage small is all I'm after Not one that's spacious and wide a house that rings with joy and laughter And the ones you love inside Some like the high road, I like the low road Free from the care and strife Sounds corny and greedy, but yes, indeedy Give me the simple life <laughs> I brought in to direct your play tonight. Yes, sir. It's the great Professor Melonhead. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, Melonhead. There he is, coming down the hall. There he is now. Well, well, well. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm one of Broadway's greatest actors. Good old Broadway boys. That's where I shine. It looks like that's where you just came from, Broadway. <laughs> Never mind yeah. about where I came from. Broadway is where I shine. That's not the only place you shine. <laughs> Get a load of that naked scout. Hey, you know, Melonhead, you should have been in a great Broadway play called Harvey. Harvey? With that bald head, you could have played the rabbit. Wait a minute. The rabbit is invisible. That's you, the invisible hair. The... <laughs> Just a minute, Costello. You're speaking to a man who has acted all over the world. I speak French, Greek, Russian, Italian, Syrian. How's your Persian? Oh, she just had kittens. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know that's a peachy joke, Melonhead? Yeah. I think I'll pull it out of it. Hey, Abbott! How many languages do you speak? 
speak? Oh, I speak French, German, Scotch, and Hindu. How's your Persian? Mm, I don't speak Persian. Now, what am I going to do with the cat? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Bellinghead, let's get on with the play. All right, Mr. Rabbit, fine. I have the cast all ready. Uh, Mrs. Niles, will you step in here, please? Oh, no. Mrs. Niles, what's she doing here? Costello, I'm going to be your wife. Give me your cheek, Lord! I want a divorce! Oh, no, you fool. I'm just going to play your wife. If you're going to be my wife, I don't want to play. Quiet, Costello. Professor. No, I don't want to play. Quiet, will you please? Keep the remarks to yourself. Who else is in the sketch? uh, Well, the part of Costello's daughter will be played by the lovely French maid, Fifi Leblanc. Uh, Come here, Fifi. Here I am, Monsieur Melonhead. (laughs) Is she going to be my daughter? That's right. (laughs) Fifi, Fifi is your daughter. That's the way I wrote it. Fifi, come here and kiss your poor old father. drama of the frozen north entitled They Just Got Wind of Costello in Alaska or Smellbound. <laughs> As the scene opens, we find Costello and his wife in their cabin in the frozen reaches of the far north. The time is winter and the weather is bitterly cold. Hey, listen, Ma. One of them boys from Hollywood and Vine is lost. <laughs> Nice part for a wolf, ain't it? <laughs> no other time. Yes. Oh, that's a blizzard of howling outside. It's been a long, long, hard winter. What's the date today, Paul? December the 49th. December the 49th? It's so cold, January is afraid to show up. <laughs> B-R-R. B-R-R. It sure is cold. Oh. <laughs> You read the straight lines, kid. I'll tell the jokes. <laughs> We've got to get out of this country, Paul, before we freeze us to death. Yeah, but we ain't got any dogs, Ma. Just look at the ad in this paper. Eskimo spits dogs, five dollars apiece. Eskimo spits dogs? Yeah. I'll bet you ten to one he can't do it. <laughs> hey, Ma, where's our, where's our daughter? She's out in the barn, I'm milking the cow. Well, she ought to be in here helping me milk these laughs. <laughs> You've got to keep an eye on our daughter. Last night she was out gallivanting with Tommy Krasner. My daughter gallivanting with Tommy Krasner? Gallivanting? Ma, give me my gun. Okay, Paul, I'll get your gun. Here's your gun, Paul. Never mind, I don't need it now. I just looked up gallivanting in the dictionary. It's all right. (laughs) Okay, Priscilla, that was fine. Now, this is the part where your daughter Fifi comes in. It's about time. That's what I've been waiting for. All right. Woo! Go ahead, Fifi. Read your line. Have it with her lines. You don't have to read it. Uh, <laughs> don't interrupt the sketch, Costello. Speak up, Fifi. Bonjour, Mama, and hello to you, Papa, you great big gorgeous man. Oh, where did your daughter get that French accent? Ah, she's such a childhood at my feet, snapping my Paris garters. <laughs> daughter, we've been waiting for you all. Yes, Fifi. Come over here and kiss your poor old father. Costello, do you hear me? That line is not in the script. Uh, you don't know what you're doing. The line may not be in the script, but, brother, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Costello, Costello, will you?
Will you please get on with the play? The blizzard is raging outside. Look, it's bitter cold. You're freezing and you've got to thaw out. Now, do you know what you do? Sure. Cece, come here and kiss your paw. No, 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 you dummy. No. No, look, Costello, the room is cold. You pick up that dried out old log and throw it on the fire. Okay. Oh, put me down. Costello, will you be quiet? Now, now we're coming to the final scene of the play. It's getting colder and colder outside. You realize you must go for help, so you take your wife in your arms and you kiss her goodbye. Goodbye, Ma. Gee, your nose is cold, Ma. I'm over here. Put down that dog. <laughs> you know, what's that long ears? That fooled me, Ma. Cut it out, Costello. Now, this is where you say goodbye to your loving daughter. <laughs> daughter? <laughs> Come here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> To kiss you like they kissed in Paris. <laughs> Do you like the way we kissed in Paris? Who turned my shoes around backwards? <laughs> Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight, we hail the men of the 94th Division, heroes of Brittany, the Siegfried Line, the Moselle River, and the Sars. Since the beginning of the war, we have sent over 150 million free cigarettes to our fighting men overseas. But now, with demobilization in progress, Free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. Tonight, the camels go to U.S. Naval Hospital, Corvallis, Oregon, U.S. Army Woodrow Wilson General Hospital, Staunton, Virginia, U.S. Marine Hospital, Portland, Maine, and Veterans Hospital, Cheyenne, Wyoming. In your honor, men of the 94th Division. <laughs> go out to the United States twice a week. Our rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud and Lou back with the final word. Well, Costello, you were quite a success as a leading man in your play tonight. Yes, and the audience was so responsive that I have decided to become a dramatic actor. In fact, I'm thinking of starring in a dramatic picture with Ingrid Bergman. No, no, not that anymore! Come on, get the guy Wait a minute, wait a minute! Hey, you white guy! I guess you think I couldn't be a dramatic actor? Are you kidding? You're so dumb you can't answer a simple question. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Fatso, what makes a balloon go up? Hot air. What's keeping you on the ground, huh? <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, folks. Tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your T-Zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. C-A-M-E-L-S. What does the pipe smoker want in his pipe tobacco? Tasty flavor and mellow mildness, of course. What doesn't he want? Tongue bite, parch, and sting. And that's why Prince Albert is the national joy smoke. For Prince Albert tobacco is choice and mellow, crimp cut for slow, cool burning, and specially treated to take out tongue bite and sting. Pack your pipe with Prince Albert for pleasure and every puff. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, coast to coast on NBC. Be sure to listen at this very same time next week for the Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes. Thursday night is All-Star Night on NBC. Stay tuned for Rudy Valley over most of these states. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.